Oh, we're live. And just like that, Lakeside is live once again for a Sunday morning in quarantine. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Yeah. Well, hey, welcome to our online Lakeside Christian Church. Again, you're joining us. Uh, my name is Ethan. If you're joining us for the first time, I'm the youth and worship director at Lakeside. Uh, and during this time of quarantine, we are just doing service kind of from our living room. So uh, we'll be starting with worship here uh, with Ethan and the gang, a.k.a. that's me. This is Grace. This is Parker. And this is Harper. So we're going to sing together. Uh, and I definitely encourage you to join with us as we worship and just um, praise God this morning with us. And then what we're going to do is we're going to wrap up. Psh! kick things over to Pastor Vince, and he's going to start a live broadcast from his living room, uh, and he's going to be bringing us the word. Um, but before we get started this morning, before we dive right into what would be our regularly scheduled music, and um, and just kind of going through that, I talked to Pastor Vince this morning, and I think we find it really important to just be aware and be vocal about what's going on in our country right now. Uh, I think everybody is aware, but just in case you're not, uh, a man was brutally murdered last week, and his name was George Floyd, and uh, and it was at the hands of police brutality. And this isn't anything to get political, this isn't anything to, to talk about whose side or what, but what it did, as well as numerous events, um, just awful events that have happened over the past few weeks, and seems to just be compounded by this uh, coronavirus, is there's just... Man, there's just a lot of ugly out there. And anyway, I, I don't have the words to address it. I feel like I, with Grace and I, we talk about it all the time. It's like we, you know, we just find ourselves at a loss for words sometimes. We don't, we don't know what to say. Um, but I think a lot of people have been really helpful online and a lot of people have been giving great direction as far as in terms of, of what to do, especially as a church. And I think Grace and I, we were just talking this morning, we were saying it's no longer enough to just be quietly not racist, <laughs> but you need to be vocally anti-racist. And um, as I was just kind of searching for words or, or comfort this past week, there's a, a pastor, a pretty well-known pastor, whose church is based out of Minneapolis, which is where George Floyd was killed. Um, and this pastor's name is John Piper. So if you're familiar with John Piper, uh, he wrote a prayer for his city. And I kind of took the second half of his prayer just because I thought it was so well put. He, he starts his prayer by praying specifically for the city of Minneapolis. Um, but then his prayer goes into really more for the people who were involved. And so uh, I told Pastor Vince what I'd like to do this morning is read that prayer for us to kind of get our morning started. It's not necessarily a fun or exciting way to start our morning, but it is incredibly necessary. Um, so I'm going to read this prayer. And um, as I read it, I want you to, to listen to the names that are listed in it, because a lot of times we can say, like, let's pray for the situation. Let's pray for the people. Let's pray for the city. And that's, that might be what we do. We pray for the city. We pray for the people. But uh, I think the reason John Piper's prayer really caught my attention is because he lists specific people by name who are involved, not just the police officers, but also people in legislation who are involved, who have to deal with the aftermath of this, who have huge decisions to make that are going to impact how people will react. So um, as I read this prayer, I just would say for you this morning, just have an open heart, listen to it, and just remember that, man, people are hurting. People are hurting bad. So... Um, so join with me as we have a word of prayer, and I'll read these words from Pastor John Piper. For those who knew George Floyd best and loved him most, bring them your consolation and direct their hearts to God for all comfort. For Derek Chauvin, who put his knee on Floyd's neck for nine minutes until he died, we ask for the mercy of repentance and the judgment of justice. For officers Tom Lane and Tu Tao and Alexander Kung, who stood by, we pray that grief and fear will bear the fruit of righteous remorse. And may the seriousness of the killing and the cowardice of the complicity be met with proper penalties. For the upright police who have watched all 10 minutes of the unbearable video of Floyd's dying, 
who consider it horrific and inhuman, who find it unbelievable that Chauvin did not say a single word for nine minutes as the man under his knee pled for his life, and who lament with dashed hopes that they must start again from square one to rebuild what meager trust they hope to have won. For these worthy servants of our city, we pray that they would know the patient endurance of Jesus Christ who suffered for deeds he did not do. For Police Chief Medaria Arredondo, Hennepin County Attorney Mike Friedman, Mayor Jacob Frey, and Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz, we ask for the kind of wisdom that only God can give. May our leaders love the truth, seek the truth, stand unflinchingly for the truth, and act for the truth. Let nothing, God, be swept under the rug. Forbid that any power or privilege would be allowed to twist, distort, conceal, or hide the truth, even if the truth brings the privilege, the rich, the powerful, or the poor from darkness of their wrong into the light of the truth. For the haters and for those who are bitter and hostile and for the slanderers of every race, we pray that they will see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. We pray that the light will banish darkness from their souls. The darkness of arrogance and racism and selfishness. We pray for broken hearts because a broken and contrite heart, God, you will not despise. We pray that our country will see miracles of reconciliation and lasting harmony rooted in truth and in the paths of righteousness. We pray for peace. God, we pray for peace. The full fullest enjoyment of shalom flowing down from the God of peace and bought at an infinite price for the brokenhearted followers of the Prince of Peace. And as the scourge of COVID-19 has now killed 100,000 people in our nation and wreaks havoc with our economy and riots and lifetimes of labor up in smoke and the fabric of our common life is torn, we pray that the compounding sorrow will not result in compounding sin, but send us desperate and running to the risen Savior, our only hope, Jesus Christ. Jesus, it is for this that you died, that you might reconcile hopeless, hostile people to God and to each other. You have done it for millions by grace through faith. So do it, Lord Jesus, in Minneapolis and in America. We pray all these things. In God's name, amen. The verse that comes to mind for me is Romans 12, 21, which is, you may have heard me, if you're in the youth group, I've said this verse multiple times and I've shared it sometimes at church, but Romans 12, 21 is my favorite Bible verse because one, it's a little easy to remember, but two, it's straight into the point, which is we cannot let darkness overcome light. Shoot, well, now I'm forgetting it. Uh, right after I just said it's an easy... Ah, ah. Oh, and do not be overcome with darkness, but overcome darkness with light. And I think that's like beautifully sums it up. I've been really challenged lately to not be overcome with darkness. To not feel like it's all broken and it's all worthless and it's all pointless. But instead, as God's word says, be challenged to overcome darkness with light. And so... That's my encouragement for you this morning. It's, it might not seem like a super great encouragement coming through tears, but that is my encouragement. Pastor Vince, he's going to be bringing to us this morning from the Word, just talking more about how we get through life together. Um, and not just in like a fun, like, hey, how do we, how do we you know, make cookies together? But in a real world, how do we put up with one another? How do we put up with people who have just exact opposite ideas and, and views as we do and people who have fundamental differences how do we survive that and i encourage you as god's word says don't let darkness overcome you but you have an opportunity to overcome darkness with light and i encourage you to lean into jesus this morning i'm going to take us into our time of worship and i'm not going to talk between any of the songs we're just going to sing these songs um but i encourage you to as we sing them truly sing these words like like, they are the things that's going to save this world right now. Because I believe they are. We're going to sing nothing but the blood. 
and Victory in Jesus. And as we sing those two hymns, those are two kind of old gospel hymns that I grew up with singing all the time. And they just remind us that it is through Christ and Christ alone that we have salvation, that we have hope, that we have redemption, and that it's through his victory. It's not ours. We didn't achieve it. We didn't accomplish it. He is the light that will overcome darkness. So as we sing those two songs, I encourage you to just rest in Jesus' work and remember that... <laughs> and just remember that even though you might feel like you have your own struggles and issues that you have to deal with and you have to overcome before you can speak any light into this world, I just want to remind you that the Bible makes it clear that that's not true. God paid the price for any of those sins, and you can be active in spreading light and hope right now. And then... We're going to close by singing two more contemporary worship songs um, that focus on God as our Father. Uh, we're going to sing Good, Good Father and Father, You Are All We Need, um, because that's the kind of relationship that I want to focus on this morning as we go to God, remembering that He has won the battle, that it is through Him that He purchased us, and that we have hope, but also remembering that He is not this distant God, but He is a Father who loves us, and He is a Father who gives us what we need. So... I don't know where you are at this morning. I don't know what it feels like for you. Um, but I would just pray this morning that whatever bitterness and anger, you are able to give that to God. Let him do with it what needs to be done. Let him direct you in your ways. But this morning, just join with us as we worship God and take 15, 20 minutes to just sing and remind ourselves that God is in control and God is God. So, ah, so let's get started, everybody. We're going to start off by singing Nothing But the Blood. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my part in this I see. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my my clean, nothing but the blood of Jesus, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Oh, no, other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not of good that I have done. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Oh, no, other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. 
I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How He gave His life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about His groaning Of His precious blood's atoning And I repented of my sins And won the victory Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with His redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew Him, and all my love is to Him. He plunged me to victory beneath the plan. His cleansing power revealing how he made the lame to walk again and cause the blind to see and then I cried dear Jesus come and heal my broken spirit and somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory oh victory built for me in glory and I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea about the angels singing in that old redemption story and some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard a tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. Your good, good Father, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Oh, and I see men. Searching for answers far and wide. 
heart, but I know that we're all searching for answers only you provide, cause you know just what we need before we say a word, you're a good, good father, it's who you are, it's who you are. you're perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways to us I know I said I wasn't going to talk this one in the songs but before we sing just this last song we're going to close by singing Father you are all we need which is the song that pulls from um, the Lord's Prayer. And I just think it's important to remember that we just sang you are perfect in all of your ways. Um, even during a time when it seems like nothing makes sense. I remember once I heard a sermon that was talking about the idea of like how we view God as good and how the Bible tells us that God is wholly good and he is perfect, um, which we are far from. But we have our own idea of what good means. We have our own idea of what great means. We have our own idea of what perfect means. We have our human understanding of what good could mean. And so when we say God is good, it's usually informed by our opinion of what good means. But we have to understand that though things may seem good, though things may seem bad, that's how we see it. That's our limited view of what things are. And even though it might seem so up and down, the Bible reminds us that God has never stopped being good. God has never stopped being perfect. God has never stopped being perfect in all of his ways. And especially that last line, you are perfect in all of your ways to us. Remember, that's not just you. That's all of us. And sometimes it's tough for me to answer, is God perfect in all of his ways to us? I don't know the plan. I don't know what it is. But singing songs like that, and this next song we sing, Father, you are all we need. I hope this reminds you that even though we can't make sense of what's going on, that God is still good, that we can trust and lean on God's word, that he is perfect in all of his ways. So let's close our time. We're going to sing, Father, you are all we need. And we're just going to remember that it is from God that we get what we need to live. More than just, just food and water and shelter, but we get hope, we get joy, these things that only God can give us in the midst of what seems to be hopeless and joyless times. So... 
Um, join with me with singing. Father, you are all we need. Let me just also tune real quick, because you know how that goes, everybody. Father who in heaven reigns, how great and mighty is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, now here on earth as is above. Oh, give to us our daily our hungry spirits fed. May all our satisfaction be in you whose grace has set us free. Give us hope, give us faith, help us trust in your guidance from the depths of your grace you have richly provided thank you thank you father you are all we As we forgive when sinned against, though evil seeks to hide your face, we fix our eyes on you by faith. So give us hope, give us faith, help us trust in your guidance from the depths of your grace you have richly provided thank you thank you father you are all we need father you are all we we just ask for your guidance this morning god we lift that or we ask lord that you would just be able to to truly speak your will to us and lord that you would quiet our hearts from the lord the frustration and the anger and 
God, sometimes the bitterness that is in us, Lord, that you would be able to to reach your hands into that, God, and just, just reconcile it. Work something good in us, God. Work something good in these people, the names that we listed, God, in Minneapolis, Lord. We pray that you would work something good in them. Help them to see the truth. God, help all of us who have opportunities to speak truth to people in our lives every day. Help us have the courage and the bravery to say what needs to be said, Lord, and to truly live out your will and build your kingdom here. Not just a cool idea of it, God, but truly a world where we serve others first. God, where needs are not left unmet and where people are not left dying in the street, but where we love each other and we lift each other up and we genuinely care for each other. So God, we know that you are the only one who can make a world like that possible. And God, we are your church. We are the hope on this earth. And we pray that you would just speak to us and use us, really mobilize us, God, to do something amazing and to, to help those poor and marginalized voices, God, that are desperately crying to be seen and to be loved. God, let us see them and let us love them. So we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, everybody. Well, hey, um, before we wrap up here and before we leave, just a couple last announcements to make. And uh, and then we'll end our broadcast and we'll kick it over to PB. Um, but just one quick thing uh, specifically talking about today. Today is May 31st. Uh, that's the last day in May, in case you didn't know. There's no 32nd. So May is over, meaning tomorrow is June. Meaning, what? Tomorrow is June. I don't even know what that means for this world. What is it? I don't know. Time, it's relative. So tomorrow's June, but what I really am trying to say is that today is the last day you can drop off things for the Sophia Ways collection drive. Um, so we're still collecting things at the church today. If you have anything, like if you went grocery shopping and it's sitting on your kitchen counter, if you're planning to go grocery shopping today and you're like, oh, this would be the perfect time, it would be. So just make sure if you have anything that you can grab or if you have anything at your house that you can um, you can let go of, where today's the last day we'll be collecting things for the Sophia Way. You can drop it off at the church. Uh, get into your car on this rainy day. Drive up to the church, and by the front doors is a collection bin that you'll see kind of off to the side. Um, if you're wondering what to what to put in there, you can check the email that goes out every Sunday morning, and uh, and there's a list of what the Sophia Way is looking for. Um, as far as the world of events at Lakeside, events look a little different. And in fact, yesterday we had our first like Lakeside event hosted via Zoom. So big shout out to uh, the ladies who helped organize that. One uh, crucial woman who helped organize and package and, and do all the box stuff would be my own mother. So shout out to Janice Armfield. She Cheers. rocked it. Um, Grace, it. Grace has even got, all the women got a cute little teacup that came in the care package. And they had an awesome time together yesterday where they got to just share some time together, even if it was virtually, and just be encouraged. Thank you, Christina Dudley, for speaking to all the ladies. Um, and look at this. Now I get to say thank you because we have a cool little little addition to our kitchenware. So it was just really cool. And with that kind of um, like piggybacking off that, for the fellas out there who are like, well, I want a teacup. How come I don't get no nothing? Don't worry, fellas. We're actually in the month of June. I believe it's Saturday, June 20th. We are planning the, well, not the exact same thing. I was going to say the exact same thing. Something similar. We're going to plan another kind of like Zoom event where it's going to be online. Uh, and if you are skeptical of those things, I understand. Trust me, I hear you. As somebody who's had to run a lot of Zoom meetings, uh, we've been doing youth group on Zoom for the past like three months now. Uh, I was very skeptical at first, then I loved it, then I hated it, and then I loved it again. And now I'm in this like middle ground where it's just, it's a tool. We just use it because what else is there? Because I still want to see your beautiful smiling face. I know you get to see my face right now, but you know what I'm looking at? A little black camera. So... <laughs> For some of us, Zoom is a great way to actually like talk to each other and see each other. We haven't seen him forever. So, fellas, I'll be there. Pastor Vince will be there. I know uh, a couple other people have already signed up online, but RSVP for that event because we're going to be sending out a little box kind of similar to the ladies. They're doing tea. Fellas, uh, we're going to be doing something that's a little more, a little more, you know, a little home improvement, Tim Allen style, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, so, fill out the RSVP because we need to know who's on the list. Uh, we'll get your address that way, and we'll get that box delivered to you uh, just in time for our men's event, which is called Better For It. So look for more information about that. Details are in uh, the emails that go out, also on our website. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay, last two things before I, I sign off. Um, one thing being bulletins. Um, if you didn't get a bulletin this week, I'm sorry, we actually, we didn't get ours in the mail. Sometimes the mail is slow. I talked to some people, and sometimes the bulletins get there, like, on Monday. 
and it's just like, ah, you know, it's a bummer. It's just, it's how it works. Um, but the, we've actually realized, Pastor Vince and I talked this week, and we are going to probably stop sending mail home bulletins every week. <gasps> I just literally heard from outside my door, I heard a collective scream all across Kirkland. I know, I know, I'm sorry, guys, guys, I'm sorry. Um, but we're going to be stopping the bulletins for a couple of reasons. Um, but what I want to say is a huge thanks. Last week, I, I, I said, hey, guys, can somebody help me fold all these bulletins every week? And so many people reached out and said, please, actually, we're looking for something to do. So now I feel kind of bad that I said, hey, help us out. And now I'm saying, actually, I'm sorry. Um, but we're not going to be doing the mail home bulletins. So that just emphasizes every week we've been sending out a couple emails that have actually contained all of the same information as the mail home bulletin. So if you're not on the email list, the easiest way to do that is fill out a connect card online on our website. You'll get on the email list. Uh, easy peasy but it, to just stay connected be checking your email make sure it's not going into spam or into like a different folder um, but from us every week we're sending updates as far as what's happening at lakeside where everything that would be in that bulletin um, we're sending out so that's kind of what's happening and then to those of you who volunteered who i emailed back and said hey i'll put you on the list just know that for things like the women's event the men's event we have coming up there are going to be more things where we're going to need help either packaging things, delivering things. Um, so I've got some of you in mind and I might call on you for some of those things down the road. So please don't feel like, um, I know everybody's looking for ways to help and be helpful. Uh, and as a church, like we're especially looking for that. So uh, I know it can kind of be a bummer to find a way to help and then not be able to. So we're looking for ways, don't you worry. Um, guys, that's it for me, Ethan. I, I think I went a little past my time here today. Um, so please forgive Pastor Vince if he goes a little bit past 11. You can say it was Ethan's fault. One last reminder, as we sign off, this is a great opportunity to give. You can give online via the app, uh, via our website. Uh, but I'll encourage you to do that over the next couple minutes as I sign off. We're going to turn off our video. Pastor Vince is going to turn his on, so make sure to refresh our Facebook page to see Pastor Vince. Thank you guys for joining with us from our living room this morning. Thanks for, thanks for listening. Um, and I hope everybody has a great Sunday. Bye.